Today is day number 15 and today I received in mail this warm-up suit three more weeks before the competition. So, and to celebrate, I'll wear it today. Uh, let's get those glutes and the calves and the shin muscles in shape. This whole week we are working in sideline and I've heard a few voices of uh, participants that have difficulty lying on the side. So what you could do to substitute for lying position is stand with your hand holding on to a chair and performing movements in standing. Swinging forward, swinging back, swinging forward swinging back, all the sequences you can do while holding on to a chair. What I would suggest is switching which hand is holding. Usually the easiest will be for the leg furthest from your hand to be the standing one and the leg that is in the middle can swing. And then you can practice all the movements of head going back, extension, flexion, extension, flexion, extension, flexion. You could also try holding on to the same side of the leg and swinging. but quickly you will become aware why it feels simpler to actually stand on the opposite leg of the chair. So please do the practice even if you cannot lie on your side. Try that in standing. Of course it's not going to be as demanding of activity for your gluteus medius muscles hip abductors but still it helps you learn how to swing the leg better without the toes catching. For the, all the rest, please lie on your left side. Again, your hand can be underneath your head or you can put it on the pillow, whatever feels comfortable to you. And your right hand is in front of you. Lift your right leg so it's parallel to the floor and remind yourself the movement of swinging the leg a little forward, swinging it a little bit back, keeping it as close to parallel to the floor as you can. Don't be concerned with how big of a movement you make. It's not needed. Make it so it's even and smooth. Back and forth and feel participation even in this small movement of the rest of your skeleton, including your ribs, including your head wanting to go back, when the leg goes backward. Very nice. Two more times. Excellent. Let it rest a moment. Relax. Now we're going to add dorsiflexion and plantar flexion to the movement. And we'll coordinate it first. Lift your leg up. When you're swinging leg forward, flex your ankle. When you're swinging the leg back, point your foot. Flex your foot, point your foot. For now, we're not straightening the knee. We keep the knee as is. And flex and point. And flex and point. Flex and point three more times. Flex, point. Can you feel your buttock muscles? Excellent. Relax for a moment. If you feel it in here, 
This is exactly the place we are targeting. Relax for a moment, always adjust number of repetitions to your level of fitness or comfort. It's not important if you start with one, two, three movements. It's not important that you do more. It's important that you learn how to work deliberately on building gradually your strength, control, and improving movement. And now we'll reverse it. When you lift your leg, again parallel to the floor, and swing it forward, point your foot. When you flex it, move it back behind you. Point your foot when it's coming forward. Flex it as it goes back. All the rest of the skeleton moves just as before. It's just that reversed. We reversed coordination of foot and ankle with the swinging of the leg. Notice what does that feel to you like? Does it feel that it's easier, more familiar? Or does it feel a little confusing? A little less familiar. Let's do it three more times. You swing the leg back, you flex your ankle, you point your foot when you're swinging the leg forward. Very nice. Stop. Let it rest. Quietly doing nothing. Now please lift your leg and let's go back to the original coordination. Flex your ankle when you slide your leg forward. When you glide it back, point, flex, point, flex, point. Let's do five more times. Or three, or two, whatever you feel like. Again, the number of repetitions is not important. What's important is the quality of work smoothness. Perfect. Stop and lie on your back, please. And notice you did work on the right side. Can you feel it in the sensation of openness of the hip, length, maybe in how your back contacts the floor on the right side? Comparing to the left. And let's practice the similar thing on your right side with your left hip. So please lie on your right side. Have your knees comfortably bent, left hand in front of you. And first, remind yourself the movement. Lift your knee and foot about the same height. Swing it a little forward. Swing it a little bit back. Re-establish the movement on the left side. Feel coordination of the spine, pelvis, what we studied yesterday. Back forth, simple movement. Let's do it three more times. Feel if your head, spine between your shoulder blades, if it wants to participate in movement. Stop and rest, please. Hmm. 
Enjoy not moving. Enjoy resting. And now please lift your left leg again. Flex your ankle when you bring your foot forward. Point your foot as you move your leg relatively backwards. Forward, backwards. Foot flexes, foot points when it goes backward. Imagine push off with your toes. Imagine heel contact, heel strike. When the foot is in front, point, flex, point, flex, point, flex, point, flex. Three more times. Can you feel engagement on the outside of your left buttock? Very nice. Stop and rest a moment. Feel if you sense contraction or a little burn sensation on the side of your left hip where those important hip abductors are. As you relax and you're giving weight to the ground, completely letting go. Let's try the opposite coordination. Lift your left foot, left knee. Point your foot when you swing forward. Flex your foot when you go back. Point forward, flex back, point forward, flex back, point forward, flex back. Feel which one is more spontaneous, more, you could say, organic, and which one takes more thinking. Three more times, pointing foot forward, flexing when the foot goes back, point when it's forward, flex when you go back, point when you go forward, flex when you go back. Perfect, rest a moment again. Feel the sensation here. These are the muscles that help us stand tall on the leg while the opposite leg swings. This is what helps us stand tall and therefore clear the foot that's swinging forward so it doesn't catch the toes or doesn't scuff, limiting risk of falling, tripping. And let's go back one more time. Lift your left leg parallel to the floor more or less and flex as you swing forward point as you go back, flex as you go forward, point going back, flex, point, flex, point. Wonderful. Three more times. Perfect. And that's our practice for today. Lie on your back. Feel contact that you're making with the floor right now.
Notice now changes throughout your left side of the body. Openness of the left hip, contact of the left leg, your whole back, rib cage. And that's our session. I'll see you tomorrow.